Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my confession series, and today we're going to be talking about video games that have actually helped me in life. So, again, it is almost 11 o'clock at night and feeling pretty punchy about things, feeling a little bit on the relaxed part of, of uh, tired. And I wanted to talk about video games, and I'm using a note card because I'll lose track. I wanted to talk about video games that have helped me. and. When I say helped me, I mean like, there are video games that have significantly improved my quality of life. Probably some of you have figured out that I am fairly shy when I feel alone, which is why I'm a little bit difficult with the camera, I guess is the best way to put it. So we're gonna go with some of the earlier ones, I guess. I guess we'll just go in chronological order. The, the the first game that really did help help me in life was because the well the backstory is and I'm sure if you've watched Retro Rivals you've heard this before. I have a very specific version of dyslexia that interferes between with the communication between my brain and my hand. It makes playing video games difficult. It makes typing difficult. It makes spelling difficult because my hand will skip letters to catch up to my brain. It makes playing drums difficult. And yes, I, I play drums. All of these things that, that I do on a daily basis, because I work in IT, of course I type all the time. I've always worked to strengthen that, that, that communication between my brain and my hand. The first game that got me onto that was The Guardian Legend. It was a great game. I spent hours and hours and hours playing it. It did not feel like a chore. And again, I'll mention the story of how I got The Guardian Legend was the year that it came out, I asked for it for Christmas from my grandmother. And we didn't grow up rich. In fact, uh, the only reason we got to live in the city that we were in, which was higher middle class is because they don't charge property taxes on people who are retired. My grandmother was retired, so they didn't charge property tax because the house was in her name. Well, she was retired age, but she still worked. So we were poor, or not well off. I won't say poor, I never went without food. But I wanted the Guardian Legend for Christmas. And one, you know, that, that year I got it. I got it for Christmas. I, I tore open the box, the Nintendo shaped box that was wrapped oh so neatly. I tore the thing open and knew, knew it was the game that I asked for and I was exceedingly happy. Didn't really understand how much my grandmother had sacrificed on a personal level until I was in my 20s. She skipped lunches at work to to save up the money to be able to buy that game for me. And that's that's I guess that's another reason, uh, another thing that that where that game has essentially changed my life is the the true meaning of altruism is like not lost on me because of that game. It definitely improved the communication between my hand and my brain. The next thing that came along in the chronological order that really had a huge influence on my life and improved my life was actually World of Warcraft. And I, whoa, whoa, I know, I know, I get it. I was addicted to World of Warcraft and thankfully I'm not really playing it anymore. I got to kick that habit. Playing an MMO like that, I improved my keyboard skills. I learned how to type better. I am no, by no means like one of those people that's taking the speed typing test and with accuracy or whatever, but I'm at least competent enough to continue working and be able to type things up and stuff without using the hunt and peck method, which is 
honestly what I was doing beforehand. Yeah, I mean, I, I owe that to World of Warcraft and wanting to be part of that community and play that game with my friends and stuff. And the very last game that has had a major influence on my life is Cyberpunk 2077. It's kind of a weird, a weird story. I developed a fear of mortality and death and uh, it even went so far as to develop into a full-blown phobia of funerals. I could not handle it. I just, I would run away all the time. And I just, I, I couldn't do it. It was a phobia. It was completely an irrational fear. No one could convince me of anything else. I, it was, I was just broken. And then Cyberpunk 2077 comes along. I remember hearing about it and absolutely loving the Cyberpunk world because I played it in it in the tabletop game. CD Projekt Red had picked up the rights and was still communicating with the person who made the pen and paper role-playing game so that I had faith. Well, I know that it had a rocky start and all of this other stuff. And unfortunately, the person who ran my Cyberpunk 20, uh, my Cyberpunk role-playing game for pen and paper passed away before the game even came out. Yes, I have this weird attachment to the game because it makes me feel closer to my friend that I lost that I just, I, I, I want to feel like he's around and I want to miss him less. And then there's all of the subject matter in Cyberpunk 2077 with Johnny and V and death and dying and the inevitability of the situation and the mortality of it. And it just, something clicked. I don't know if it's because I'm a Keanu Reeves fan. I, I loved like him as Johnny Silverhand, or if it was just me connecting with someone again, even after they're gone, or what it was, but I'm better now. And I'm not so afraid of my mortality and death that I run from it. it or, or that I run from even thinking of the subject anymore. A big thank you to CDPR, a big thank you to Keanu Reeves, even though I know he's probably never gonna be a, like even watch this. I can't, I can't thank you guys enough for helping me process that, helping me slowly start to conquer that phobia and helping me get that sense of feeling of reconnecting with a friend that I've lost. I mean, I, I know I've said it in the past and I've said it on other people's channels that I would absolutely love to play test Cyberpunk 2, essentially, for uh, CDPR. And I know that sometimes they, they like reward some of their play testers and whatnot with like early access or money or what I don't I don't want money I don't want early access well I mean I'll get it just because I'm play testing but I would like to to create an NPC and it would be an NPC that is based on or would be almost a carbon copy of a character that my friend who made the pen who ran my pen and paper game it would just be a carbon copy of that character I would consider that full payment and just being able to share the memory of of my friend and one of his probably best npcs that he had ever made for the cyberpunk pen and paper role-playing game yeah i mean i know that there's a lot of people that think video games rot your brains and and that it's just a complete waste of time and stuff and i just watched a video today from square pegs stating that his son forced himself to learn how to read at an accelerated pace so that he could play the Pokemon games. I mean, who cares that a video game was being played or whatnot? This kid found motivation in, because of a video game, to better himself. Yeah, I mean, like, there's, there's no reason, there's absolutely no reason that anyone can't do the same thing. I just told you, three games that have helped me better my life. And 
you know what? If you've got some sort of similar situation or anything like that, leave it in the comments below because maybe one day one of these developers will take a look at, you know, create a video response, who cares? But maybe one day one of these developers will, you know, be coming through and stuff and realize how much they've actually changed someone else's life. And that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and I look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.